Hello again. Today I'm going to be looking at a small fuse accessory pack that Dave Jones at EEV Blog is selling. You can see the package comes with an assortment of fuses. These are all produced by ASTM. This is a HV110 11 amp. You can see it has a brake current of 30 kiloamps at 1000 volts AC and DC. It has the RU mark on it. Of course made in China. And there's two of these fuses included in the kit. And the other fuse is marked HV620. This is a 400 milliamp fuse. Again rated for 1000 volts. And it is also RU marked. So not too long ago I made a video where I was looking at these parts from UXL. And again I believe these are a counterfeit SIBA fuse. I took quite a bit of data off of these and compared them against a real SIBA part. So today we're going to be repeating those tests on these 400 milliamp 1000 volt ASTM fuses and we'll see how these compare. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the length of the fuse. This one happens to measure it looks like 1.251 inches. The next thing we'll do is look at the diameter of the ceramic body. It looks like that measures roughly 0.223. Next we want to measure the weight. We can see it measures roughly 3.2187 grams. Alright, next we'll be looking at the DC resistance. Again, we'll be using my 34401. You can see I'm not nulling this out. Obviously using a set of four wire probes. Wow, it's almost dead on two ohms. Let's just try reattaching. You can see it's still roughly 1.99. See, so yeah, 1.985 or so. Let's just try another one of these fuses out of the same pouch. Uh, the same thing, like two ohms. So yeah, I'm saying these fuses are reading about a half an ohm higher than what the data sheet calls out. On the left I have my Brahman BM869S and on the right the Unity 181A. The UT181A is going to be measuring the voltage drop directly across the fuse. While the BM869S will be looking at the current through it. What I'm going to do is apply 500 milliamps through the fuse and then we'll measure the voltage drop. What we'll do is let it sit for about a minute before we take the measurement. Alright, so this is roughly one minute now. So here you can see we have the ASTM fuse installed in our test fixture. Once again the Brahman is looking at the current through the fuse. And I have the 121GW pre-production meter in the center looking at the voltage drop across it. And that's in parallel with our UT181. So these two meters should be reading the same value. And again this will be the current through the fuse. So what I'm interested in is looking at the typical voltage drop for the fuse. So again at 400 milliamps the fuse is rated to drop about 660 millivolts. So let's see how close that is. So you can see we're currently reading roughly 662 millivolts and it's at roughly 311 milliamps. So this is at roughly 400 milliamps and you can see the fuse is now dropping 903 millivolts. So again, that's fairly far outside what the data sheet calls for at 660 millivolts. The next thing I want to do is measure the break time for this fuse. So this is the ASTM data sheet, and this is the particular fuse we're interested in. It's an HV620.0.4, and again, that's rated for 400 milliamps. You can see the braking capacity for both AC and DC is 10 kiloamps and it's rated for an AC DC voltage of a thousand volts. Typical cold resistance is 1500 ohms. Typical voltage drop is 660 millivolts. That's at the 400 milliamps and of course that SIBA fuse that we had looked at was 500 milliamps. So it looks like for one times the rated current the fuse would hold for roughly four hours minimum. If we look at the same rating for the SIBA fuse this fuse is rated for one hour minimum. 
and again with the SEBA fuse being rated at 500 milliamps, 10 times the current or 5 amps, it's guaranteed to blow in 6 milliseconds or less. When we look at the time curve for the ASTM fuse, you'll notice that they don't actually call out the 400 milliamp fuse, but they have one at 315 and one at 500 milliamps. So that line is somewhere between these two here. So if we look at 5 amps being applied, and I kind of sketched this uh, 300 milliamp, I'll just continue this out a ways, and then look at the halfway point between the 300 and the 500 milliamp fuse, and then we draw this line across, and you can see we are at roughly 4 millisecond break times. Again, the way I'd made this measurement before, I had a contactor that's uh, strapped to the output of an LM338, and again, that's set up as a 5 amp current source. And we can see it here. And I just have a push button that closes the contactor. Next, we'll be using the Bryman to measure the accuracy of the current source. You can see I have a small 1 ohm resistor that's tied in series with the output. And the Bryman is in series with that. And then I have our highly modified UT210 clamp. Again, this clamp has been modified to add this oscilloscope output, but it also has a very high bandwidth. The 3 dB point for this probe is now about 100 kilohertz. This is attached to our LaCroix oscilloscope. So the scope is currently set for 2 volts per division. Alright, let's just see what we get here. can see roughly 4.97 and our oscilloscope is basically two and a half division that's up or roughly five amps. So the next thing we're going to do is replace our one ohm resistor with the fuse that we want to test. So I think we are set to go. Again this will be a five amp test pulse through the fuse. I'm going to set this for two milliseconds per division and keep our fingers crossed here and let's hope that we actually capture what we're looking for. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. It is basically filled right to the brim. Fairly fine consistency. Could be a piece of the filament right there. So looking on Dave's website, looks like he's selling this kit for $25. In the United States that'd be $19.05. That is basically giving these things away, my opinion. But let's look at the data that we collected for it. So the SEBA and the ASTM are both marked RU. Of course our clone UXL is not marked at all. I'm not sure what the price is for the SEBA fuses. I never found a supplier for them. The ASTM, again, for $19 for that complete set. Even if he didn't throw in the two 11 amp fuses, that's a lot cheaper than what this clone fuse was at $6, roughly a pop. Looks like lengthwise, they're all basically the same. This is just slightly about 10,000 shorter than what the SEBA fuse is. Looks like the diameter of the ceramic is also roughly the same. The weight is kind of interesting. You notice that it's uh, 2.44 grams for the SEBA, and it's a whopping 3.22 grams for the ASTM and 2.36 grams for the UXL. So if we look at the DC resistance, again this is using my 34401, I measured 1.44 ohms for the SEBA, 1.997 or roughly 2 ohms for that ASTM 
and 0.65 ohms for that UXL. So what I'm wondering is if this fuse is even the right one or is this marked wrong because the next value up you can see is 1875 and that's a 315 milliamp fuse. Of course the fuse is marked for the 400 milliamp device. I'm just surprised that the resistance is this much higher. You know we're even beyond this by quite a bit. Then we look at the time it takes to actually open up the fuse with 5 amps passing through it and I measured roughly 2 milliseconds. Then compare that with the UXL at 12 and a half milliseconds. This is quite a bit faster and again the rating for the SEBA fuse would have been 6 milliseconds maximum. When we start looking at the 2 millisecond mark this is roughly in this area right here. So that's even still quite a bit quicker than what the 315 milliamp fuse would have been rated for. But again we are outside of what the manufacturer is showing for the curve. So could you use this fuse in your meter? I think it really comes down to if you need that 500 milliamps or can you live with this 400 milliamps or not. And again the burden voltage will be slightly higher with this fuse being roughly 2 ohms versus uh, 1.14 or so. Other than that the fuse looks real good. If I had to pick between these and one of these hands down I would go with this because I would rather err for something that's going to blow faster at a lower current than something that's going to blow at more than two times what the manufacturer's rating was. So I think that's going to be it for this video. So if you've purchased any of these from Dave and you've ran these tests yourself, I'd be interested in seeing what the data looked like that you collected. Until the next video, later.